disturbing the grain. Helps it inoculate the rest of the milk quicker, more fully and completely, which I think works better than a longer, slower process, which also enables the ability for other negative microbes to get into the mix. Uh, using a lot of kefir, you're pretty much guaranteed a complete kefir product when you're using like pasteurized milks or even raw milks. And I've never had once had a single problem with using raw milk right out of the cow. That's what I use. I don't know what people are talking about. Uh, uh, heat your milk, heat your raw milk uh, <laughs> so that it doesn't ruin your kefir. No, don't do that. That is insane. I don't know why people are going out there getting raw milk and then heating it. I actually talked to some people at the uh, farm I go to that were doing that and I was just flabbergasted. I'm like, what are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, when you're putting this much kefir into you know, a, a 16 ounce jar of milk, there's no way that kefir is not going to destroy anything else that's in that milk. I mean, it could have listeria. I don't care what it's got in it. Once you hit it with this much kefir and just that amount of milk, that kefir is going to absolutely obliterate anything that's in there within a very short amount of time. Very short amount of time. No time for anything else to proliferate. So use a lot of grains in your milk, no matter what. Much better results. I recommend a three to one ratio. Um, depending on the temperature, could go to two to one or to four to one, depending on what kind of temperatures you're dealing with. Over the 80s could be really fast at three to one. The four to one probably be okay over into the 80s, but uh, it doesn't matter. I much prefer having this finished kefir within two and a half to six hours, completely finished. That kefir, well, considering I had it in the refrigerator for the majority of the 24 hours, um, and then it was put out for five hours, but it does continue to ferment when it goes back into the fridge. After that, uh, after I have it set out for five hours, it probably continues to ferment for another hour after you put it in the fridge. And then plus just the slow fermentation being in the fridge. So this is it. Great kefir. You don't have to be a homemaker, you know. Not, ever, not all of us are Donna Sedgwick out here. <laughs> Sally Homemaker, Martha Stewart and shit. You don't have to be. Excuse my language. You don't have to be. Kefir is easy, especially when you use the refrigerator. High amounts of grains, short ferments. Takes less time in my opinion. I don't know, unless you get your cycle down to where it fits your 24 hours perfectly, that's fine. For me, this happens to be a method that works. Um, it probably w will work for a lot of other people too that maybe aren't home as much or don't just deal with it as much. Anyways, this is going to be some great kefir. Another day, another kefir. Happy kefir, Anne.